So, our, our, God, I, I was about to steal that line from fucking John Oliver. Our main story Our main today. story tonight. I'm so mad that he's uh, on hiatus until on next hiatus. year. hiatus. That sucks. I hate it. It makes me so sad. Yep. Um, but, uh, say love you. We have us. We have each other. In this the is true. Um, okay. So, you know, PhD Squared it sits at the intersection of scholarship and gaming culture. Um, and we, we said that from the beginning. Um, and we vacillated between all kinds of topics in both of those spaces. Um, and, and one of the things that we were like, right, we've played with this idea before, but right when we launched this project, we then started kind of taking more seriously the idea that we might collaboratively teach a class about video games about video games and it's not about how to program them it's not about how to make them it's about games as pieces of culture as texts as stories as pieces of art as things that draw people together um and so we kept playing with this idea um and and a lot of it you know in in the realm of bochinche but we like last night we were like dude what are we going to do for monday's episode and we wanted to do something with music building on last week's episode, but you know, the law's the law and we can't do anything fun. Um, so I was like, bro, we should do the gaming syllabus with the input of chat. So Herbert's gonna do the magic thing that he does with OBS. Um, so we started this rudimentary document. Um, the, and the class for now is, and to, to be clear, Lord willing, we will teach this this summer. This is not an arbitrary exercise to drive viewership. And like, this is a bona fide document that we are hoping will coalesce into a course that we can actually teach. Um, <laughs> um, so it's just called the video game. It's just called a video game. Um, I, if you, you y'all have seen my syllabi, like I love epigraphs. Links dot 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 to me is like iconic, <laughs> and I, I think it speaks to the fact that like the, the gaming experience always asks you to put yourself in it, right? It's always meant to be immersive in a way that like other pieces of art aren't or aren't always, or aren't as explicitly. Um, and even though I'm open to being challenged about the notion that difficulty is a necessity, at the point that I'm perfectly willing to concede, I do love the chief from Animal Crossing said, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. And that, um, is, and of course, that is the equivalent of get good scrub. <laughs> um, minus the scrub part, just it's like get good. A little, little, little more, more chipper. I think the that. scrub is implied. <laughs> it's, it's in parentheses you just can't see them <laughs> um and then of course you know the the classic snes pad which i think speaks to like at least for us and, and maybe you feel differently like in terms of your gaming biography herbie but i felt like for me the snes was like my coming of age console oh no this so this is where it started let me let me give you a really quick um late anecdote late on us, that, that drove me absolute banana sandwich my lovely spouse who's, I think, just trying to pretend I don't exist right now, post-Disney sing-along, um, is, is uh, you know, she's not into gaming. She doesn't like it. She mm -hmm. loathes that I spend as much time in here as I do, that there are two Xboxes in this household. Um, was, like, the only game that I really ever played and enjoyed was Mario. And I'm like, Super Mario's great. It's good stuff, right? Like, very fun. Next one. And um, I, there was like a commercial. Hold and up, it, hold up, hold, wait a minute. I need you to pause. Because <laughs> Luna just called the N64 controller a penis. Oh my and God. I can't. Focus. Don't body shame it. I mean, <laughs> upon reviewing oh the play, my God. the ruling on the field okay, stands. <laughs> um, God, there, God, there, was cool some, all right, <laughs> there was some Mario commercial, <laughs> and it showed Raccoon Mario. Oh, um, great Mario. I think I think it was like a like for the Mario like compilation on Switch, mm -hmm. um, that it was like Mario Galaxy um, 
Super Mario Sunshine and Mario 64. And, you know, I was like, oh, like, all, like I haven't played Galaxy, unfortunately, because I don't have a Switch. Um, Good. But, uh, you know, like, Sunshine is one of my favorite games, and 64 is, is like, the coup de gras. Um, and she's like, I didn't know that he had a Raccoon Dead. I'm like, did you never play Super Mario 3? She's like, there was a third one. And I was like, oh, like, <laughs> Super Mario 3 is so good. <laughs> and it drove me nuts. I didn't have a Wii either. Um, I, I, I abandoned Nintendo post GameCube. <laughs> I, I, we had a disagreement. Come back. We had a huge disagreement. The GameCube was like, they did so many right things. And then they came out with the motion controller and I got mad. Um. Yeah, I was not happy about that either. So, I, and that may have a lot to do with like me being a just like a old fogey of gaming tradition. I don't think motion control is the future. I hate what PlayStation has become with a burning passion as a diehard Final Fantasy fan. However, I'm a little jealous of the haptic feedback on the triggers. I think that shit is really cool, and I wish Microsoft had figured that out. Um, it it. It looks and feels dope from what I've heard, and I'm I'm sad about it. Cause I don't think anything would beat like playing Destiny with haptic feedback in my triggers. I'd be pumped. Like pulling back Levy Breath on that thing would feel fantastic. Yeah. I think I think haptics are the way. Um and I think that they're well, I, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. I, Ace, um, I think you're right, because um, you know, most, like, intense FPS players turn vibration off, because, like, anything that jostles them drives them nuts. Um, I need feedback, otherwise I don't, like, know what's happening. Yeah. Um, it's, like, part of the sensory experience. But in any event, back to the controller. Um, yes, this was this is, like, this speaks to my origins as a, as a budding gamer. This and, like, the Game Boy, if you put those two together, like, those were the cornerstones of turning me into the, the human that I am now. Yeah, there's some, you know, like I, I've got my pad here. Like there's something about like the ergonomics of this that I really love. Yes, I am that serial friends. Um, but there's something about that pad that just feels perfect. Yeah, I, I agree. There's something about the SNES pad that is just flawless. Um, it feels good. And especially the Japanese edition that had the the RBY buttons and not the purple ones that came out for the US edition. There, there's just something about that controller that to me is like I told you, Ace. Let me let me let me put y'all on the game real quick. Sidebar. <laughs> I play Call of Duty on 2020 sensitivity. And the only way I do that without throwing my right stick is this band right here. It gives me just enough resistance, this purple band right here, just enough resistance that I'm not throwing my sticks, um, but still getting the responsiveness. And so I I click heads. Um, I, I mean, I yeah, I, I'm, in, I'm impressed because, you know, I used to be like the sensitivity crackhead of the group where I would always just like, jack up my sense in every game that we play because I, yeah. I need it to move faster um to like correspond my reaction time and now like i'm just i can't wait for december 8th man i can't wait till destiny puts in the the next gen upgrades so i can have both my aim sense and my ads sense so i can change them and the fov slider and uh, dude did you hear how it's gonna work by the way no tell me so me on. They, they're like kudos to bungie for for doing this properly on the series x it's gonna be 4k 60 fps all the time until you queue for the crucible and the crucible will auto downscale your game to 1080p 120 fps only in the crucible so you won't ever have to change your settings or anything you can play the game in beautiful 60 fps 4k all the time and then when you go into pvp it'll auto adjust to give you max frames and at 120 frames yeah 120 frames on console I'm waiting. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. I, I'm excited I'm for us to finally transition to PC so that you and I can flex the full 165, but you know, we'll get there. I like it. I like it. I dude, when you were shopping for monitors, I saw my monitor, but the new version that's 280 hertz, and I was like, God, I wish I had waited. Yeah. I I needed this because I was running on, on 1080, like a like just a, and a regular ass TV. So this is a welcome upgrade. I don't Listen. know what I'm gonna do with 
Sweet. Listen, the judgment in the chat, not appreciated, okay? Um, the PC, this is the first PC I've ever owned. I bought yeah, it with, with, with my dollars this year. I built it myself. I'm very proud of that. Um, and um, it was, it, it like, the, the PC Mastery thing was not a thing I could get into. And honestly, like, yeah, no. the amount of players that I know that I watch on stream that play PC but play on controller because, like, that's just what they're used to. I I feel I feel no shame. I feel no shame for not being a, a mouse and key player. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, I couldn't do it. And just, there and you know talk about haptics and feedback. Like there's something about triggers. Like I couldn't do the mouse. I just like there. I like the, the, the mouse of the doesn't trigger. bother me. The keyboard bothers me. Mm-hmm. I I have more control over the thumbsticks than I like. I know that you know having keyboard is is good but mm, no um like i i am happy to just rock on my controllers i've got the the hall of fame retirees on the wall they will continue to grow and prosper the red baron one and the baroness um as they have been named oh no we we have good we have the nice mechanical (laughs) keyboard do you do you not see the the sexy black widow chroma um the tournament x edition because it's nice and small and compact I have all the yeah, tools. I, have, I, I just, I just don't like how it mouse. feels. Yeah, like when I first got my PC, I booted up Warzone and went into went to multiplayer and tried to play mouse and key, and I was like, I could do this probably if I just kept playing. I just don't like it. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just different. Yeah, but go ahead. Get us back on track. We could, we, we could talk hardware all day. Yeah, which we would um, do in this class. <laughs> Yes. I'd spend an entire day just knocking the PlayStation. Okay, well let's not do that. Let's just let's let's get to driving. Scroll down, scroll down. Get to driving questions. Okay. So here and, and this is this is just this is me putting this together like an hour before going live. And so I think the the way I'm I'm framing this is like how do you take a kid who's never for any reason Right, it could be low. Who's just like not into games at all? Um, that's that's a that's a good catch. <laughs> um, low, who's not into games at all, or a kid who, for any number, right, access funds, whatever, has never been into gaming or has never had access to gaming, mm. right? Because gaming, it, with the death of the arcade, all of a sudden, like made gaming elite. Right, we were talking about this last night with 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 a colleague of mine, Andrew. Like going to Chinatown and putting fifty cents on a cabinet to call next, right? And being or like before Dave and Buster, bro, you you get a twenty dollar card at Dave and Buster's and you've played four games and then you're fucked. Do you remember how far you could stretch twenty bucks yeah. at Cyber Games? Mm-hmm. You you would have left over to go get pizza afterwards. Oh yeah. But so, so with, with the death of the cabinet and the death of the, the arcade, like how do you, how do you, how do you train a gamer? How do you make somebody appreciate this space? And what are the stories, right? In the same way that like, you don't get a PhD in sociology and not know Mark's favorite Durkheim, Du Bois, Freud, right? Like what's, what's the body of work that's requisite for somebody to get into this? And not just that, but what are the deep, profound questions worth asking in this space and about this culture that are generative and productive and interesting? I'm sorry, I'm catching up with chat. No, you got it. If you're not into games, why take the class? I don't, look, I took a class called From Monty Python to the Real Grail. And it was on medieval literature and popular culture. I could not give a rat's ass about medieval lit at all. But I loved Monty Python. And so, you know, like there, it, it could, right? Like I, I could see somebody taking this class just because it's a class on video games, right? Like video games feel so antithetical to intellection, right? Yep. Like you do, you play video games to like, 
fry your brain, not to elevate it. Which so some of the questions hard disagree, right? Like one of the main points I think that would underlie this class is to to ameliorate that belief that like you're not doing incredible intellectual heavy lifting when you do this. Not all of it. Agreed. Not all of it. Uh, yeah, obviously. Right. But um but yeah, the the notion that like two two game is at odds with highbrow intellection is yeah. is bogus. Um, okay, so here's some of the driving questions that I've posed. I'm open to dropping some. I'm open to add, right? Like this, the idea is to do this together, right? So one, what's the canon of gaming, right? What are the you must have played in order to have sauce in this space? Now, here's a, a sub-question about I this. I know what question you're going to ask me. Go, go, go. No, no, because it's not a question. I, I think it's a concern. Huh. The concern about it is that that it it feels like it goes into that G checking gatekeeping culture, right? Like, is is this is answering this question important for the creds, so that you're not checked by other people in the space, or is it actually to appreciate where gaming has come from and where it is? Because there are people, yeah. and it's still the case now, where like. You know, people lose their shit. Like, you've never played so and so, and I'm like, no? Question mark? Like, I didn't know that was a rite of passage to be considered yeah. a gamer at this point, but it it has certainly gotten to that point. And you know, yeah. th it doesn't work the same way in academia, right? Like, you're gonna read these texts whether you like it or not. If you haven't read them, people, some people are like, well, then yes, you're not qualified to do your job, um, and you're gonna have to learn this shit. But you can't even get, like, trained to do it. Whereas, like, there isn't the same sort of rigor for gaming. You can, like, especially with console wars and, and PC versus console, there's, like, a number of different avenues that you can go that I think speak to, like, the underlying subtext of this question. Yeah. So, and, and for me, the question is about, like, appreciating the historicity of gaming, right? Like, the, the genealogy, right? Like, you know, I think about, like cyberpunk 2077 right like that traces itself back to this they don't exist without tabletop games right um and i was actually thinking to myself like do 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 we run a campaign like do we run kids through a pen and paper dungeon in this class <laughs> um i i don't know Maybe. i don't know so but but to answer the the question that you're actually po and i think a, a really that important is dnd luna yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. All the gaming, but without the console. <laughs> Gotta do it in yep. your head. Yep. <laughs> no, says Luna. Um, yeah, it's... It's... Like, this... Zelda wouldn't exist without this. So... Oh, oh, oh. Okay. oh you want to know oh. what the, the role of gatekeeping is? Well, I don't... Reese, not you, Reese, but Reese, I don't know if you, you had a, a underlying point that you want to put in the chat, but... I don't. I don't think it has a, a purpose. I'm. I'm curious what what other Reese has to say about this. But I don't like the gatekeeping aspect of gaming. I don't think it functions well. I think that we have set up a lot of boundaries within the like who has played versus who hasn't. In addition to like who's the sweat and who's the casual. Like mm -hmm. that gatekeeping distinction in of itself is super problematic for gaming as a whole. I, so I. I think that. The sweat casual thing I can see is as problematic, right? Because it's it, but I, I actually it's I feel about I feel about exposure to certain texts, like okay, the slip was right there. I feel about exposure to certain games, the same way that I would feel about somebody talking about the means of production, without having ever read Das Kapital. Mm -hmm. It's like you're so you're entitled to your opinion, but like how well informed. Is are you it? yeah right and so so i think the question then becomes and and then with games right it's like so okay like i'm trying to think of something that i because i played a lot of shit um, <laughs> it doesn't i I can't offer like a personal example, but I think the question also then becomes to, if you carry it to the nth degree is, should you have beaten it? Super Metroid. Mm. 
that game is hard as fuck. Yep. And it, you know, I have it on the on the SNES Mini, and I got stuck, and I got stuck as a kid, and. I just had to brute force it as a child, just like play, 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 play. Right. And it was like going to work, right? Like there was nothing to look up. You just like, all right, you get the pad out, you load up and you grind, 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 grind till you want to just like bash your head through the television. Mm -hmm. And then you try it again the next day. Right. I got stuck and I'm like, God, why don't I remember this? And I immediately went to my phone and I felt so dirty I, and I couldn't do it. You know what's interesting about that is that, so there's a couple things I want to address in the in the, in the chat first. Um, I think I think Luna, you're right that the FPS community is probably the most sweaty gatekeeping nonsense that's ever existed. Yeah. Um. Like it is a community that cares the most about rank, that cares the most about prestige. That that will say you are not good enough because you don't have X, Y, and Z statistics. Right. Like I I hate that I get hung up on them too. Um. I I have never used them to gatekeep. But, like, I do get hung up on the numbers because I know that they'll be used against me. And so, like, you need that credential, unfortunately. Right? Like, but, but I'm so, never going to be like, you still... can't play with me because your KD is in a certain level. But I know yeah, but that, they... like, I might get checked by somebody. But it, it, so that, but that totally validates the gatekeeping. It does. Right? I know. It, That's the shitty part. It's an essence to it. Oh, absolutely. Which is terrible. I know I'm buying into the to the the problem. And I'm guilty, too. I'm but just I do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know how I said this, you know, before we went on stream, like I talked about, I got on Titanfall 2, a game that I'm very, very fucking good at, 3.3 KD, and I tanked, I was getting clapped because I haven't played in such a long time, and I dropped my KD by a 10. Do you know how bruising that is? I just said that on, like, this is like exposure therapy. I just said that to the internet. Like, yeah. I would never admit that. No, I, Ever and, and admit I get that it, I dude. tanked my KD in one night, a 10. And, and I get it, right? Like, yeah, you know, um, Aman points it out, right? Like, you need members for the raid that just came out today. you you got to have X amount of experience. you got to already have the raid exotic and 10 clears day one, right? Like, I, honestly, I made sure that I cleared the raid the first week. One, because I wanted the jacket. I've never gotten a raid jacket before. It's my first one. It's super exciting. And two, um, I know that, like, if I want to do farming runs this week, I'm going to need at least one clear, Somebody's gonna go on raid report and be like, "Oh, he's never done it before," and then I'd be I'd be fucked. Yeah, which sucks because like I'm a very competent, capable gamer. Like my my clear came after I joined a second group because the first group like couldn't figure it out. I was willing to just be like the the pawn, the extra sixth, and the guy was like, "Just tell me where to go and I'll do it," because I'm adaptable. And like I just couldn't figure it out, and I was like, well, "Fuck!" Like this is terrible. And I know, like, this is why I have a tough time with LMG because I get frustrated with stuff like that too. Um, yeah. But I want to, I want to make sure that, like, if I'm trying to get picked up, that I have at least like the the paper creds that yeah. will then allow me to validate that I'm a very capable Destiny player. Right. You need the resume. You need you need you need the the the, the bachelor's degree and the three to four years experience. Um, right. Like, and, and so, that's why so, I wish like you could see my triumph score from like D one because it's like I've been playing the game for so long that yeah. it like it was, you it was can't so you much can't more... touch me. Yeah, it was a better metric of like how accomplished you were in the game. So then I think the pre right, I started this question about like what's the canon of gaming? Uh -huh. And to me, it was this question of like what should you have played? And, yeah. I, and I do hope that tonight we get into that. But maybe the question that we're actually asking is what makes you a gamer? Dude, right? And this because is we're an saying, question. right? Like, and Reese is pointing out like in the FGC, you'll play with anybody, but you lose credibility within that space if you're playing pre Pachakuma, right? Um, similarly, right, like, um, you know, like, how much shit did people catch when they were using, uh, M40 ACOG, right? And that was, and maybe that was a little bit of a meme, but, like, Soros, D in Vanilla Destiny, right? Yep. Like, there's shit that, like, is, is so, it's, it's so dominant in the meta or so cheesy or so easy or so cheap or whatever that, you might have the right numbers, but your style of play places you at the fringe of that gaming space. Yeah, and and I, I think it makes sense, right? Like, I, I did actually a whole freaking... Um, Fuck Akuma overall. <laughs> I, did a, I did a whole lit review where, like, I just, I spent time defining gamer um, as, like, a, as I think it was, like, my, I think it was first year of grad school, actually. Um, yeah. And it was, it was hard to, like, parse through. It took, like, five pages of yeah. different definitions of what this term is yeah. and what it looks like. And yeah. I think in practice, it's even harder to pin down, right? Because 
you might not be considered a gamer if you're not playing the meta. But right. like it like if you're not playing meta, then like you're not a real gamer. But at the same time, if you're like a slave to the meta, you might not be considered a gamer either. Then the same way, right? Like you know, I to, it, in the fighting game community right now, like I, I, I watch a lot. I watch like a lot of actual thing that I've heard. I watch a lot of DBFZ, and I'm like, it, it's it's like the right now in DBFZ, it's like the debate of of UI Goku. It's like UI Goku is busted, and everyone knows that. If you play him, you're smart because he's the best. But if you play him, you're an asshole because he's oppressive as all shit. And it's like a, it's just a meme to play him. And so like you, you can never really win. Right, like same thing with Destiny or, or with Call of Duty, right? Like if you know in the ground meta, if you're using the ground, if you're using the Bruin, like you're kind of an asshole because you're using the meta gun. Like if you can't win without it, then you're trash. Right. But like you have right. to use it, otherwise you're not taking the game seriously enough. Yep. And it brings in a question like, what then is the criteria for being a quote unquote gamer? Yeah. And and you know Luna brings up a good point. And Luna was the kid Mothman in one of the early episodes of season one that I mentioned a kid who in my book is a really accomplished gamer because Luna's crushed every Zelda title. Which Luna are pursues important. completion, mm -hmm. right? And and right, like, for example, you I couldn't tell you the last Call of Duty campaign I finished. That's not true. I can't. Modern Warfare 2. Um Zero. I don't. I I I cannot tell right people like somebody was gassing up a uh, uh, Cold War because they were like the continuation of one of the most exciting. I'm like, shut the fuck up, boy. Load me into lobby so I can click. I'm not here to talk about no Cold War story. Um, and I think that there are some people in the spaces that we inhabit who are like, okay, cool. So she beat Ocarina of Time. I too grew up in the 90s um, and would dismiss the accomplishment, right? But I'm willing to bet that the, the only person who maybe knows more about Zelda in my life than Luna is Scotty. Mm -hmm. I and, would agree. And, and, and that would be simply and only because of age. Simply and only, no, I don't. Jesus Christ, I, <laughs> CGI. I can't even, uh, God damn it, Amon. This, this goes, Amon, I have a, a whole archive called Shit Amon Says. This is going right in there. This is going right in there. Um, and so, so I think, in my book, as a product of that era, right? Like, Luna's got her bona fides. I can't test, I can't G-check Luna, mm -hmm. but she's right. There are people in the spaces that you and I travel through who would be like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Like, wh how does that have any merit whatsoever? Um, and so I think, so So maybe the, 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 the opening question is, what makes you a gamer? Like what allows you to, to, to take that on as an identity, right? And remember, ident identities are two-way streets. We were talking about this in Peace and Justice, mm -hmm. right? It's not enough for you to claim an identity. It needs to be validated by members of that group. Um, but I do want to get to this question of what are things that we think people should have played and maybe played and beaten in order to and let's take the gatekeeping out of it yep let's let's right it's not to say i'm not here to tell people what to play or not to play and and what's a good game or what's a bad game um well, and the reality is like we we haven't played everything and we can't we don't have the the luxury nope. to do that right like that would be nice that's right but there are so many titles out there that i only find that about you know through connections and relationships that i have or you know through news that i read or whatever so it's always going to be subjective. There are some things that I think most of the general gamosphere just like recognizes as canonical. Um, and even then, like sometimes those are debated, but for the most part, there are, there are a few that like we, we look at and we just say like, these are legit. And, and to one thing about the, the canon before we get there um, about like being a real gamer and stuff, cause you were talking about how hard super Metroid is. Um, and that, like you know, you looked up, you looked up how to how to do it, and you were like, uh, I didn't, I didn't, oh, I didn't? was tempted, okay. I tempted. did not. Fuck but that. so, but so here's the thing. I don't know if you ever did this, but like, now it feels kind of grimy, right, to look up like a YouTube vid and, and figure out how to do something, just a little bit, especially if it's an old game. If it's a new game, you're like, somebody make a YouTube on this. I need to know the answers, um, unless you're like one of those puzzle people who wants to solve it yourself. But I remember back Unless in the day. The puzzle game, no. I remember back in the day when I was playing like N64 games, that, like Banjo Kazooie. There was a lot of hidden shit in there. 
and like you would buy like you would buy when the game came out the strategy guide. strategy guide you buy the premium yeah. strategy guide and so like the challenge wasn't finding the stuff it was being capable of doing it like some of the secrets and things were like elaborate complicated they required setup and you had to do them successfully and that was the challenge it was an entirely different era of of gaming or the the sort of like mechanics of secrets were more significant than like the discovery of them now right being the first yeah. one to be like i have made the first youtube vid on how to do this thing right like i i was joking with Amon because i think on saturday or or maybe like on thursday when we were gaming and the the on or tuesday tuesday of last week when i got on and the new um the new aspects were out and you know the warlock got the aspect with the with the the rift that freezes things i was like oh i wonder if that's going to work with vesper radius i think it'd be super cool right if if you know the if the freeze can be broken by vesper's arc wave and today i sent him a clip because somebody on twitter was like this is super cool interaction vesper of radius plus frost pulse and i'm like i fucking knew it i i knew it and if i was like a an edgy youtuber i would have had a video with uh you know 50k views already a week ago because i was thinking about how this works right because that's that's like the level of of strategy that we're at right now where you got to be the first one to come up with the strategy not the one who executes it most flawlessly mm -hmm. but in any event yeah um about the so, canon of gaming um I, bro reset ff7 i and and i agree play. i agree you I, have to I play hear, from ff7 I hear oh i thought no 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 i, no, like, no, I, I mean this one not the remake like you got to play the original blocky shitty one polygon polygon yes like you, you gotta play that one. Um, By the way, the, the remake is coming to Xbox. I'm excited. I'm pumped for it. I'm excited because we're gonna get it before part two. Uh, hopefully, we get part two at the same time as everybody else, which would be dope. Um, I agree with Luna. You need to play Super Mario World. You need to play Mario, Super Mario Brothers, like the original one. Wait, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because see, this this is how. Remember, syllabi have to be wieldy, okay. and syllabi always have to make necessary cuts. Okay, so because so, we can sit here, and we can say a hundred games you have to play. Here we go. We, we're going to teach this in a few weeks. Here we go. Here we go. Let me let me let me start because I I like I like teaching it. I think or I, I conceptualize it the way that I conceptualize of, of like teaching theory in Soch. Like you got to start with like some some core things and then move up. And okay. so I, I think like the core is. So, is like Super Mario World. I totally agree. Sonic the Hedgehog. Interesting. Disagree. Sonic is hard. Sonic is hard if you if you like have never played the old ones. It is a hard game. Um and, and then you're saying Sonic 1? Yeah, like Sonic 1. Not even Sonic I, and Tails? I would compromise like Sonic and Knuckles on the Genesis. Because that one was pretty uh, we'll fun. Leave, we'll leave Sonic 1. And then I would say um, probably Legend of Zelda, like the, the the Game Boy one. Or like Link to a Past. Like Link to the Past. Because no. you, you, no, you build yourself no. up to Ocarina of Time. You can't play it outright. You can't start with Ocarina of Time. You can't. Oh, what? I, no shot. Explain. I, because, like, I, I think that if, if the course was a genealogy of Zelda, then yes, of course. You don't right? have to play... I don't think you have to play more than two Zeldas. To understand Which the importance. Two? Just two. I think, I think you have to play... You're saying any two. No, no. I think you have to play Ocarina of Time. You have to. And, and? I think to qualify and appreciate... Zelda that you have to play the Legend of Zelda. All right. All right. You could argue that you need to play Majora's Mask. You could argue that you should play um Breath of the Wild, but like Breath is so good. I agree. Yeah, I mean one okay. top one All top right. down okay. Zelda and one 3D right, Zelda. So That's exactly saying, right. Are we saying Link to the Past? I think a Link to the Past is is the right one. Luna Luna's our, our Zelda expert. 
I think Loon's upset with me. <laughs> Just threw, <laughs> threw, threw, the, threw the whole stream right out. Now. I was like, nope, nope, I quit. Okay. Link's Awakening makes sense. I, I, I could totally agree with that. So we're saying a top down. Luna, I'm deferring to you here. Yeah. Yeah, one, I'm, I'm going, going through the stages. The stages agree. Disagree. <laughs> Listen, the logic is there. You have to play a top down Zelda and you have to play a 3D Zelda. I cannot wait for you two to meet so she can punch you in the head for this. I listen. <laughs> I I never I never claim to be a Zelda expert. I appreciate it for what it is, and I think that the only way to appreciate it is to play the top down version and play the um play the three D version. Okay, while Luna agrees, because I think those are like those are like the classics, right? Um. Oh, my whole government is on the internet. Oh, they can't see the comments. Okay. No. Oh, but they can't see my cursor. That sucks. Okay. Um, all right. So, okay. Final Fantasy VII. Super Mario World. Now, okay. So, what are we appreciating about Sonic? I'm less convinced. I'm not saying no to Sonic, but I'm less convinced about Sonic. So, I think Sonic brings a different flavor to the side-scroller that Mario doesn't. Okay. Um, okay. Like, the thing about Sonic is that it, it has... It 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 gives you less decision-making time mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. predicated on speed. Like, with Mario, you get to just do things at, like, your own pace, basically. You have a time limit, but it's not, like, hard and fast. Like, Sonic is about speed and efficiency the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, like, the, the ways in which the maps work and the movement works, I think is, like really it did invent the speed run i would argue like it it's just an entirely different mechanic and approach to gaming yep i'm like, convinced like i yeah, I've, yeah, pl yeah. I've played mario like on super efficient mode like i played super mario world and been like how fast can i beat super mario world since i've beaten it so many times and i'll like do all the skips and all the things to get there but that's True. literally how you play sonic like there's no other way to play it yeah I, I, dude i i buy it i buy it um okay final fantasy super mario Sonic, a top down right, and we're saying this is theory one. If if so, right, we're so saying theory one. If we're gonna add Pokemon, we're playing the originals. That's not a question. You're you're playing yeah. red, blue, or you're playing silver or gold. That's it. I. And so, you're playing. So, and, oh, but, okay, maybe, so but maybe is... you gotta play like Stadium because that was fire. And but stadium so, like but so. Here's the thing, though. Good. This is where we get trapped, though, because right, we're saying the, we're talking about foundations and rudiments, right? It's like learning to play an instrument, right? We're teaching somebody yeah. to play an instrument. So I don't know that. I think stadium was amazing, but yeah, but it's the not canon. I agree. I don't know that that advances gaming. Yeah. Um. um I so, so I I agree that we need Ocarina of Time. I don't, but I think it goes in theory too. So I I actually have a weird thing about final fantasy being in the in the rudiments of foundations if you tell me to put anything no 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 six to one no 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 seven seven is the right one um but i'm interested in where it should go oh this is in in order but because because i think of like pokemon's contribution to to gaming and it like sort of It sort of messed with the like RPG meets RTS in a very odd way that like Final Fantasy had already been doing for a long time, but we started doing it on Game Boy with Pokemon. Cause like that like there's there's no like turn based gaming that's better than Final Fantasy, like in its prime. It's just, that was turn based one oh one. Beautiful to look at, super fun, really interesting. Pokemon did the same thing, but in a different vein because it was also top down and i think there's something to be said about like the turn-based game style and how it's got its own like specific repertoire of skills and strategy mm -hmm. that are really unique to like fire emblem is 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 right up there i agree fire emblem is is one of those series that has a lot of good stuff in it that is in that so like turn-based 
category. So then here, so here's a question. Here's a question. Do we split this console and handheld? And hear me out. Because I would say, as I hear you riff on Pokemon, like I wasn't at all thinking about like Aria of Sorrow, right? Castlevania. Oh God, but yes. I, I had already had Castlevania like it, in my head. It, right? Like Castlevania is a must. Castlevania is so, it is so I mean, punishing. Wait, like wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I still don't know anybody who's ever a hundred percented Aria of Sorrow. Let's let's back up. Let's back up because we we've thrown out a lot of stuff and we need to. So we're saying there's foundations and rudiments, which is like in grad school, right? Theory one, right? Theory you, one. You got to know Mario. Like, your favorite time, right? What do we call this second section? Mm. The stuff that builds off of the foundational text, but advances them. And and dude, I mean, we got it like. Reese is throwing out some good stuff here, like Gran Turismo. Yeah, that changed racing. I'm it not did. a big racing guy, but it, like it was huge. It did, right? Doom. Doom is also very important. Like we haven't named an FPS yet, like or <laughs> theory and application. Reese, Reese is secretly trying to get picked up as a guest lecturer for this course. That's what's trying to happen right now. That was assumed. That was assumed. <laughs> That was assumed. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So then, why the fuck? Okay. Green of time. Okay. So he. So okay. You threw out Pokemon. You were saying, do we play the OGs? Or, hear me out, do we throw silver and gold, but in theory and application? Yeah, I mean... It, right, I think... like, it, 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 it takes something that was good and solid, and, like, th that, like, from, from, from uh, RBY to GS, like, that jump, I think, is one of the biggest jumps Pokemon has ever made in its entire life oh, cycle. It was, it was huge, and it... it, it actually incorporates the original game by making you go back and play through the other region like that was that was ingenious them to be like we have two separate areas and you're gonna be able to go back and forth between them once you've beaten the first part of the game i right? like that was like added dlc like a second expansion that they just put in the game and didn't tell anybody until you beat it the first time um I think Luno wins. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, um because like you know yeah there so there's there's something about what became of of I, I I think Reese is right that you can't play a number of other genres of games without having played some of these prior to right like um Gran Turismo is one of those games that that you you can't just jump into um out of nowhere like you couldn't even like it, it would be hard so and and like forza wouldn't really be able to be forza without gran turismo that's just a fact you know ben makes a good point man i i, I don't i don't think that well, and, it, and it's so I'm conflicted because he's he's right, but I don't know that rudiments and foundations is where. No, it's my not. It's not. It it goes in a different place, and I think it actually goes in like a really odd space with a game like RuneScape. Because there's something about the investment and the world building that feels very akin to like when that was the end all be all. Like I 
dare I say I would put Minecraft and WoW in the same category. So maybe we need, because there, there's also like an online and multiplayer element that sets those games apart from everything we have on this list. Correct. So there's, there's, there's definitely like a break, like a, a, like paradigm shift from land, like videos. land gameplay <laughs> to, you know, like online gameplay. There's a, there's like a huge jump and we could talk about the, the games that first yeah. like broached that gap of like playing across platforms, right? Like Halo has to be one of those, honestly, not just for the narrative, but like it, it really did help push online gaming to a form of legitimacy that we hadn't seen before. Well, it wasn't Halo, it was Halo 2. It was Halo 2, you're right. Halo 1 was still land. Um, but Halo, Halo, cha Halo changed. Oh my fucking god, Goldeneye! You yes. have to play Goldeneye. That is correct. That is actually part of the rudiments of Foundations. Goldeneye is the first FPS, the first real one. Holy! And those control. You ever gone back to play Goldeneye? No, I haven't because I'm terrified. Oh, the controls are so bad. Yeah. No, no, I would never do it. Oh my god. Um. Uh, S sidebar can yeah. we can we just mourn a little bit that like movie ip games like they just have never been as that good no you know what it's like like it's a lost art um i want to i want to pose an addendum here an amendment to something that i that i said i i think that there is logic in subbing out sonic for metroid but then, but are we really about to have a list without a Sonic game, without a Sonic title? I, I struggle with that. So I'd be, I, so here, maybe my own personal allegiance though, um, I would be willing to take out Sonic 1 for Sonic Adventure. Because Sonic Adventure- On, on the, the Game Boy Advance? On, on the Dreamcast. Oh. A, a forgotten console that did not do well because it, it just wasn't marketed properly. It was complicated. It was too next gen and for it, its time. And it was- Right, it was that interstitial space, right? It was better than the N64 and the PS1, but was never going to compete with the PS2 Two. and yeah. the Xbox. Yeah, and and so, ah. but it gave us Soul Calibur, Sonic Jet Adventure, Radio. Jet Grind Radio. Like, they, it had titles that were really, really good. Right, like I like you can't you can't not talk about Soul Calibur because it's 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 like very pivotal. And I think Sonic Adventure is one of the most underappreciated Sonic games ever made. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm saying Sonic Adventure moves into Apocrypha. Yes? Yes. And I think we take Sonic 1 out for Metroid. Super and I Metroid. agree with Luna that, that Mega Man has to be somewhere. And we're saying Super Metroid. I want to make sure they're on the same yeah. page. Um, Which I'm about to go play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After well, that's not true. Also, do you see the time? Yeah, we're okay. fine. We're still within the confines of, of what we've been doing. <laughs> nah, just 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 make it sure. Keep it track. I'm keeping track. Okay, all right. So let's Final Fantasy Seven, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time. I I think I think I think there is a very good case. For keeping them both in rudiments and foundations, I would I would Goldeneye. concede that. Yeah, Goldeneye, but it, it feels like we're missing some. Like we don't have a fighting game here. Um, Super Street Fighter Two. Yeah, I think Street... Dalsim was low key busted though. I... Reese, I need we need guidance. No, it would be Street Fighter Two though, wouldn't it? No, it, it wouldn't be Tekken. It'd have to be Street Fighter Two. Tekken Two was lit though. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for Reese to defer, but I'm pretty sure it's. it's... Yeah, I, I. I. feel like we have to defer to Reese, but Smash Melee was the shit. Yep, yeah, and and you don't need to play Smash to appreciate Melee. Melee is like the penultimate At world. All. Yeah, Smash Melee was lit. Um, yo, you know who's Loki a Smash sweat? My kid Eli. 
Yeah, Alpha 2 or Street Fighter 2. That's right. Yeah, it should be in, in the foundations. That that one. So, Street so, Fighter okay, 2 or Street Fighter Alpha 2. And then, yep, yeah, I agree for 3D Fighter Second 3 or, or Soul Calibur 2. Do, in, in my, for my money, I say Soul Calibur 2, but I did like Tekken 3. So, okay, are we saying... Are we saying Alpha 2 in Foundations? Yeah. They just, like, reiterated okay. Street Fighter 2 and made it Street Fighter 2, but better. Okay. Um, so then... Do we do we throw in because we've got an RPG? We've got pocket side scrollers. Well, and Super Metroid is like a side scroller, but not not quite. Um, we've got pocket Zelda games, Street Fighter, Golden Eye. Chat threw something up about Mega Man slash Castlevania. Um. I, I would like to put Mega Man probably in the rudiments and Castlevania cool. should go in a in a category that is just called unbeatable bullshit. And it should be Castlevania. Dark my Souls. Whole life. Um It's just, not that Castlevania is unbeatable, it's that you can't one hundred percent it. It's just, that, that's what I'm saying. Like just I, I just want there to be a category of games that are meant to test the mm-hmm. limits of your ability. Mm-hmm. To just like they're so good, but so Lion difficult. King? Oh my god! On the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Okay, but so we're saying Mega Man, but which one? So this is where I get stuck, um, because like the Mega Man X series, I think is really the way to go, but it seems like a cheat. Though I mean, I like I buy I buy. Reese's argument, though, that like Street Fighter Alpha Two builds on Super Street Fighter, but gives us a better game. Yeah. So I, I like. I think if the, if if the foundations of the the version that we're submitting, two hundred twenty hours on what? Uh, Breath of the Wild. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now that game's that game's bonkers. Um. I, and I think I think when I think about this piece, this question here, but like our video games art, I think Breath of the Wild quickly rises to the top for me. And and get this, so I've been, you know that I've been like mulling over. This is a total sidebar, mulling over whether or not to get Godfall. Yeah. Um. And and the decision is no. I haven't spent any money on it. I, I didn't purchase it. But I've been reading reviews, right? Because, you know, like a game will come out. And it's like riddled with bugs and they start patching and patching and patching. And a month down the road, you've got something that feels a little bit better supported, better built. And maybe it's a worthwhile purchase six weeks into its life cycle. Yep. I was watching a review of it. And one of the most interesting things, first of all, as like a, a as a melee loot, like a slasher shooter or a slasher looter. It gets all of the, like, people are saying that, like, the innovations on combat are really interesting. Um, so, like, land, like, it, it, it motivates you to, like, use both your primary and secondary weapon by, because landing hits with your, with the weapon you have equipped, like, charges shit up. For, like, cool things like that, mm-hmm. that, like, I'm confident other folks are going to take and run with. But the, it's, like so gilded everything is shiny and everything is bright and there are particle effects for fucking everything and in in a game like in a style of game that requires timing that requires you to know where incoming attacks are coming from um it's just overwhelming and the comparison that this reviewer made was breath of the wild right that the game like graphically is muted by comparison and so overwhelmingly thoroughly beautiful and well composed and well put together um and so there, there's something to be said about the aesthetics of gaming that i hope i mean I, tonight we're not going to get into that but i hope that we can that that we can keep segmenting this and invite chat to help us curate so, this document so two things 
Yes, I'm Halo. Listening. Halo's going to be on the list. It has to be. Combat sure. evolved because of what it did for first person shooter gaming, and then Halo Two because of what it did for multiplayer online gaming. Um, so that like, there's just no getting away from Halo. Yeah. No. Second, about games being art. I think that you can have a pretty game and a like well put together game at the same time. Um, and and so like when I think of answering the question, are video games art? I I immediately think of Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, that, that game beautiful is game. beautiful to look at, to play. The narrative is fantastic. It's got Bioshock mechanics, so it's yeah. awesome. Herbie, can you do me do us a favor? Yeah, can you just scroll up? Yeah, yeah, so that we can see what's in Apocrypha. You got it. Thanks, bud. My bad, I cut you off. No, no, That's, you're fine. Tommy. Um, no, so like when I think about that, like I, I, I do think about games like, like Bioshock Infinite because it, it, um. It just has that ability to to be beautiful to play and so good at everything it does um that you just sit there and just you're like in awe of just how great the game is there's there's just nothing else i've heard that horizon zero dawn yeah. is like that i've heard that god of war is like that yeah. right um i even heard that like uh star wars um did i fall in order was super good in that same regard it's, i'm, I'm looking forward great. to it coming to games pass this this week because um i finally get to play it and like good. i heard it was awesome cinematically it like and it, it, know right i know i know it's like supposed to be hard and, and and interesting but like that that i think is where the art comes in at least in the the like visual gaming experience but then i think there's a lot to be said for games with good mechanics when like the structure of the game is just absolutely incredible and so well put together right like they just like um Honestly, like art for me as as like a well done game, is is Borderlands. Borderlands manages to accomplish power fantasy and fun perfectly. Like BL two, BL three is getting there. It's almost it's almost reached the mountaintop. Almost. I think I think it's about to overtake BL two as like what Borderlands has always been. But like BL two managed to perfectly encapsulate an incredible story really funny with like oh, yeah, you know cell, cell shaded graphics that like aren't anything yeah. special to write home about right yeah. but like the guns are cool the mechanics are cool the pairing of all the math and things is like really yep. integral everything and interesting. under the carriage is pretty flawless. yeah and so it's like like that is just really fun mm -hmm. because you can appreciate how thoroughly well designed the game is you just sit yeah. there and go like holy shit this is like really well put together like i, I think about a game like anthem Oof. that has a system similar to what you're describing in godfall that i wish games would take and run with right like i think the primer detonator mechanic that anthem had its combat flow was awesome the combat flow felt so good i just wish it was more in depth like and you and aman and i've talked about this if you layered that system on top of destiny's subclasses the game becomes so much more interesting it's already you great. Just need to get rid it's, already, of Port it's already my That's favorite. Game. It's already my favorite game ever of all time. I'm I'm, I'm okay with saying that. Um, if you were to layer a, a primer detonator system onto De onto Destiny, where like each subclass interacts with the other ones in a very specific way, you get to do so many cool things in that sandbox. It would just take it so farther beyond where it's at right now. And that's probably been its biggest struggle. The game is beautiful. The narrative is awesome when it's doing all the things right, which it's doing right now. Um, it just needs like a little bit of that that care um, underneath the hood to be like, can we make the combat a little bit more interesting, a little bit more intense, and 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 like so you get those moments where you know right now like you'd have stasis, and like your teammate wielding a solar subclass could throw a grenade at you and break you out right or that, that's what if, i'm saying if you had um arc and and solar right that you could cause like a greater explosion if you combine the two abilities together or like void would yeah. negate um arc completely or you know like right. weird interactions that would just make for cool stuff a little bit of a um, rock it just it just elevates it yeah. a little bit higher like that's that's where i think of like artistry in a game and it's one of the reasons i think that like final fantasy is is what people hold up as like the gold standard for a, a a artistic game final fantasy has always had incredible graphics it's always looked cool right like even in the polygonal versions of it when you got into combat everything looked dope 
right? Everything was cool. And, and even the, then, like, the summons Fantasy were sick. Like, was the, Final Fantasy VII was like the best looking RPG of its era. Oh, yeah. Um, and then you have the materia and all the abilities, yeah. and you have to mix and match your party. And, like, that, that I think is artistic. So, like, just yeah. the, the visuals alone aren't enough to make a game good. Now, so er- earlier, right, like, Reese makes the, the valid critique, right? They're just going to gatekeep the foundations to old dude games. And I think it's legit. And if we think about, like, our discipline, for example, right? Like, Marx was writing 40 years before Du Bois, and Du Bois is a founding father of American sociology, mm-hmm. right? So we've got a lot of stuff from, like, the Super Nintendo era. We jump with Ocarina of Time, GoldenEye, Street Fighter Alpha, like, it's, like, it's a rebuild, right? So, like, and it, it, and it does innovate, but it, it harkens back to, to a title from an earlier era. And what I, what I, what I, what I, the provocation I read there is, are there titles that are more recent, but have made sufficient enough innovation in their respective space to be foundational? I mean, like I, perhaps yeah. Dark Souls belongs on this list. Yeah, I would say Dark Souls and like Horizon Zero Dawn probably belong on that list. I think I think Horizon did a lot of things for gaming that people just hadn't seen before. Honestly, Chat? like you could put No Man's Sky in rudiments. No, like I don't like the game. I don't play it, but I think that what it did for a specific type of gaming experience was something that people hadn't seen done before. I you can like. Type it. I don't. You can type that. I'm listen, not typing that shit I don't appreciate that type of game. I just acknowledge what it did. Um, I think Devil May Cry Three. Devil May Cry Three is like the best hack and slash ever. I don't care what anybody says. Devil May Cry Three is the one. I agree. Um, CS:GO. Yes, I think my own just hatred for CS:GO makes me not want to put it on there. Um. I would yeah, argue that so- Overwatch has done a lot. I think Overwatch was very revolutionary. It has struggled because of the way that it's been handled. And Brigida. Like, yeah. they broke the game um, with Bree. Yeah, that was, that was bad. Um, so Bree it's, literally like, is the reason we the, have The Overwatch game in and of now. itself is very innovative in trying to in, like combine a MOBA and an FPS in a way that people hadn't ever really seen before. That was very unique and very well done. Um, it still but struggles because of its identity. Does that make it innovative, or does that make it derivative? I don't think it's derivative because you you could make the argument that Battleborn did that a week prior. And ba- and uh, so so here's the thing. And Battleborn, like, dude, so and so service, honestly, the service is still live. You know that by the way. So honestly, like, they I would love to. Do, I would love to. Oh, we won't have time then, because I would have loved to do like a you you play Battleborn and you play Overwatch, and then you have to choose. Between which one you think was more innovative? Red pill, blue pill. No, seriously, because honestly, if I had to pick, and I know I'm a Gearbox fanboy, like I think Battleborn did a better job. I think Battleborn just suffered from a bad launch window and and shoddy support at the beginning. Yep. And because it suffered so quickly at launch, it just didn't get the support it needed because they wanted to pump out BL3. Which is funny because BL3 came out like six years later. Right. Um, okay, so let me let me let me let me back up. Let me back us up. I want I want us to take in before we get to the two hour mark. I want us to take in. Yeah, because we're gonna have what to. We have part, so far, have and I also want to want to take account of what's still left on the table. Right, Chad's left a lot. Final Fantasy VII, Super Mario, Super Metroid, Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, GoldenEye, Alpha Two, Dark Souls, DMC Three. Uh, now, are, are, are we saying DMC3 is innovative enough to be in rudiments and not in Apocrypha? Um, no, I would say it's in Apocrypha, but you know what game might actually go in rudiments in its place? Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden 2? Uh, maybe. Reese? I don't, know if, I don't know if I remember Ninja Gaiden 2 as well as I remember 1. I'm thinking like Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden like, was legit. or like Splinter Cell. Also, we haven't mentioned Metal Gear Solid, which is a huge problem. And it's gonna have to be Metal Gear Solid too. Not gonna lie. That's fine by me. 
you're opening up this like there has to be a part two to this because we're gonna have to work on it offline where we just like list all the things that need to find a home so and okay then workshop how, how know, it goes let's have that be what we do right now what have we named that needs to find a house <laughs> gear solid we are gonna include fallout because i agree two. fallout um cuphead um grand um minecraft as was mentioned earlier oh yeah um fortnite unfortunately has to be talked about and it will have to make the list yep uh, i just had one and i completely forgot it was connected to Fallout. half life yeah portal honestly whoa whoa whoa, whoa. What, are, what are we doing computer? um i would say okay um yeah, Herbie, scroll up. So and this is this is as far down as I can go. Oh, okay. Um, until I'm trying you to see what more. else is in. Say that one more time. I said until you actually hold on. Um, let's just do this. Wait. There. That should help. Um. Smart. Okay. Um. I think Skyrim has to go on there. Yeah. Now, so hold, so here's the challenge, though, friends. A syllabus has to make cuts. A it syllabus does. is an exercise in a failure. We cannot let this turn into hundred greatest games of all time, right? That list exists. Multiple versions of that list exist. Invariably something has to be cut yeah many some things have to be cut so i i like that we are giving us ourselves things to trim but i just want to put that out there like at some point no oh, yeah i think, I think go. The, the trimming is is not the easier part necessarily and, but... and we won't do that without them oh. um also mega man and castlevania we did not get to that yeah um mega man and castlevania for sure are both super important How about like music and rhythm games? Like DDR? Guitar Hero? Very innovative. Guitar Hero 2. Honestly, the best one. Guitar Hero 3, maybe, but Guitar Hero 2. Um, I think Ben posed a good question. Where does mobile gaming fit? Um, at the risk of sounding crass, in the garbage. <laughs> no, You're telling me there hasn't been a single innovative mobile game? Um, like, outside of Candy Crush and Clash of Clans? I don't think so. You know cock is a hit, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, those are probably the, the two that I can think of that have anything, that have done anything legitimate. Clash of Clans has more cultural significance than No Man's Sky. And you're not saying anything because you know I'm right. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, especially in, like, in, like, in like no the Man's grand Sky scheme of things. Fire and wasn't good for four years. You're, no, you're... Yeah. Yeah. Um, AR gaming. Um, you can put that in like the... The, the rhythm gaming like sphere as well like beat saber and shit <laughs> um oh pokemon go that's true that that was yo and you could argue that pokemon go deserves a spot yeah because it, because it helps because it solidify surveillance capitalism can we, <laughs> can we talk about how much more lit that summer was than this summer. Yeah. We yeah. went from like, let's go check out that new bistro. There's a Pokemon I want to catch there. 
to like, let's watch more black people get killed on TV. Uh, at the risk of like totally, you know, putting it on for a daddy surveillance, I will take that summer over this summer any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Hey, no, it, it was significant. You're not wrong. But I'm, I'm going to put it on the list because we're not adding things. Okay. See, this is, I mean, like, and this is where we start getting into murky territory. There's just so many things that you could... Um, you could argue about. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, a lot of seminal games like KOTOR. The word... The, like what? KOTOR. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it, it's just one of those games that, that if you like if you didn't play it you actually don't know what you're missing out on which is actually set, like unfortunate especially if you like star wars yeah the only kirby that's acceptable is kirby's air ride whoa, whoa. a truly phenomenal game aries will be up on that any day of the week and twice on sunday yes but kirby's air ride is only... is kirby par excellence I'm just saying. Uh, Kirby's Adventure? Kirby and the Amazing Mirror? Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland? Every Literally game is all just, of them were excellent. Kirby just wants to suck on some titties is what every Kirby game is. I'm going to go ahead and put Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. And I'm gonna put Nightmare in Dreamland is a very good one. <laughs> Um, I can't do my finger like that. Um, you know, and the, the melee roster really kind of presents us with all kinds of, right? Like, Fire Emblem? Luna's right, Resident Evil. But then which one? Uh, I believe that it has to be RE3. You can make a case for four. But I believe RE3 is the right one. You don't think RE3 is the right one? No. RE3 four, is... Or four. four. Four is the one that I think got the biggest. But I think three is the best one. Resident Evil 2. Hands down. Mm. That creepy ass mansion, bro. But that that's we leave that for another discussion. Okay. Luna's right on the money. But so like Crash Bandicoot has like historic significance. I don't know that it like not quite gameplay significance. Like like Crash is big for those people who who recognize him as big. I think Sony wanted him to be like their Mario or Sonic. And really it's Cloud. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. This is gonna be very hard. This the, I we opened a Pandora's box, Diablo two. Um, okay, okay, we have to stop. We it's have to stop. Five after eleven. Yeah, we have to 